Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. At a recent Risk Five summit, Google's director for Android engineering took to the stage to talk about how Android will now support Risk Five going forward. So what does it all mean and how will it impact consumers? Well, if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. So Risk Five is an alternative uh, instruction architecture that is available. It is an open source instruction architecture in the sense that the document itself doesn't need licensing and therefore it is trying to compete with ARM, it's trying to compete with x86 uh, and so on. Now up until now Risk 5 has not had any official support inside of Android and now Google are throwing their weight behind it saying it will become a tier 1, that means on the same level as ARM, on the same level as x86, it will be a tier 1 architecture for which you can build and run Android. It's, it's important for us that Risk 5 be seen as a tier 1 platform by the rest of the ecosystem. Now before we dive deeper into Android support for Risk 5, I think we need to dispel again some risk five uh, myths i do have several videos about this because android authority just published the results of a poll where they asked would you buy a risk five android smartphone and uh yes for sure was the reply of 45 percent of the people around another half of the people said yes if it was kind of on par with what you can find available today for arm and it's that 45% who just said yes for sure without kind of making that uh, you know that uh, uh, condition that it's the same as what you can get for ARM that kind of surprised me and I'm thinking it's because there are some misconceptions about what risk 5 are as I said I have got other videos about this but very very quickly let's just have a look at those so number one, only the Risk Five specification is open source. It means you can download it, you can read it, you can implement it, you can do what you like with it. Okay, but it's the hardware that gets designed is not open source. This is not Linux for hardware. This is not going to be big companies like you know Qualcomm or IBM or Samsung or whoever Apple making Risk Five high performance Risk Five processors and then just giving them away for free. The difference is with software, anybody with a $50 secondhand computer and an internet connection can start writing open source software. They can contribute to Linux. They can contribute to desk, you know, GNOME desktop, to KDE desktop. They can contribute to all the open source software exists out there, you know, compilers and office suites. And they can do that just with a $50 computer and an internet connection. Hardware is not like that. If you want to build a chip, it's going to cost you millions, millions and millions, especially when you talk about seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer chips. You're talking millions and millions of dollars to actually get the those chips manufactured. It's not the same thing. And so the chip companies, and today we've got companies like Sci Fi, Andes, Imagination, MIPS, MIPS, the old MIPS company now makes RIS 5. They all make their chips. They don't give them away for free. You have to license them just like you license uh, chips from ARM or from anywhere else. You have to pay a license fee and a royalty fee every time you use those chips. So RIS 5 isn't open source as the way people think it is. A second thing that people seem to get confused, they think well, if there is an open source design out there, then we know what's on the chip and they're thinking about security and back doors and government surveillance and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's not true either because they can publish a set of files and say this is what is on the chip and then they can completely produce a different chip. There's no way to verify that what's in there and what's in there are the same thing. It's just not possible. You can't verify the physical transistors that have been burnt onto the chip. And the final point is that some people seem to think that magically Risk Five will be better, higher performance, better pricing, better efficiency, just because it's Risk Five, which is uh, actually a, a load of nonsense. In fact, I tested some Risk Five microcontrollers versus some ARM microcontrollers, and the Risk Five microcontrollers are nowhere near as efficient as the ARM ones. So Risk Five isn't magic just because it's Risk Five. Anyway, let's move on to a Google supporting of Risk Five. And talking of Android, we do have a new Samsung Galaxy smartphone coming out soon. Now, if you'd like to show some interest in that and join the Samsung Reserve program, then you're guaranteed $50 off the price of a device. If you want $50 off the next Samsung Galaxy flagship, then use the link you'll find in the description so that you can do that and get $50 off. So Google has been accepting and adding patches to the Android open source project, that's the open source version of Android, since September of last year. And now Risk 5 builds are part of their daily build system, the continuous integration system, so they can see that it is building and that it passed some, uh, some simple tests. So we're doing daily builds against the tip of tree. You can see we keep, we keep um, Risk 5 green with up-to-date compilers every single day. So it's up there now with the other ARM and x86 
six builds that are happening. If you are a Risk Five board developer, you're developing, uh, you know, a board that you want to send out for enthusiasts and hobbyists and so on. Then you now you can get Android open source available for your board by pulling down those sources. However, there's a long way to go in terms of what's needed to make it a viable system. Google themselves admit this. So, for example, there's not full. Uh, Java runtime support built in, yes, yeah, not there yet, and they're going to add that in in Q1 of 2023. The Cuttlefish uh, emulator, the Cuttlefish virtual device, doesn't yet uh, support uh, Risk Five, and there's a whole bunch of optimizations. And Google have a slide that just shows all the work that needs to be done in compilers, in graphics, and codecs, and so on, that actually make sure that they're not just using the default C version of any particular algorithm. So, you know, for example, for a codec, for things like ARM, there is some handcrafted assembly versions of those things so they get the best performance out of it. At the moment, it just falls back to whatever the default C function would be to do that. And of course, that impacts performance. So there's a lot of work to be done in terms of bringing it up to the same level as what you can get on the other platforms. And then, of course, that's just bringing it into the Android open source project, then to actually get Android from Google available on some kind of device is another step because you've got all of Ga uh, Google's services, the Play Store, Gmail, and you know all that kind of stuff that need to get uh, location services and all that that needs to get added to a commercial project. So this is for the open source version, and of course, an actual commercial version from Android is another step after that. And then once that is finally released, and you've actually you could get a device, a Risk Five smartphone, then of course you've got the problem. There's so many native apps built for ARM. So for example, most 3D games don't use Java and go through the runtime library. They're compiled directly to native ARM binaries to get the best performance for, you know, 60 frames a second that you want for these fantastic 3D games. And of course, they won't work on RISC-V. They all need to be uh, recompiled. And of course, there are millions of apps uh, in the app store. And the ones that run Java should just run uh, straight out of the box. But once you're talking about these high-end titles that are using native binaries, then they are going to need specific support from the game manufacturer from the uh, app developer to do that so even if you get AOSP uh, up and running even if Google produce a, a commercial version of Android you're still going to need lots of support from the ecosystem to bring that over to get full risk 5 support so I see it's quite a long road well this is a, an interesting announcement from Google an interesting announcement that they're putting their weight behind uh, risk 5 from an Android point of view, but we've still got a long way to go. My guessing is that by this time next year, so early 2024, Google are going to have kind of basically everything they want on RISC-V done, in terms of optimizations, codecs, graphics, all that kind of stuff that I mentioned before. Then I think we're gonna see uh, another year after that before maybe we get a RISC-V device that is actually supported by uh, Google as a commercial offering, maybe even 2026. Uh, and this is all just, you know, finger in the air, guessing which way the wind is blowing. But don't expect a Risk Five phone to appear in the market next month. That's not going to happen. Which then brings me to the final point, and that is, of course, while Risk Five is an interesting architecture, I do have several videos about it here on this channel. Okay, just because it exists doesn't make it better. So, of course, Intel and AMD both sell millions and millions of chips in laptops and uh, in desktops, and Intel has failed to actually make its way into the smartphone market with low power versions of the x86-64. AMD tried to bring their graphics into the Samsung uh, Exynos, and I wrote, uh, did a video here on the channel, will it, uh, AMD be able to save Samsung Exynos? And the conclusion I made at that time is it's gonna be really difficult, and I proved to be right. It is really difficult to take a desktop technology and shrink it down into, you know, kind of a mobile technology and make it all just, as powerful, as price efficient, as uh, power efficient, and that's quite hard. So let's say there is Risk Five out there. That doesn't mean it's going to be better, faster, greater performance, or whatever than what you can get nowadays from ARM. And they were able to break into that market. Well, Intel failed, AMD failed, Samsung tried designing, you know, its own ARM chips. It failed. This is a competitive market. If you don't have something that's better that's already out there then no one's going to buy it. So yes, great risk five competition, love competition. It forces everybody to be on their best game, but don't overhype it. 
Don't overhype Risk Five and think it's just going to be this magic solution because it's not. Now, at the moment, there are no CPUs that are comparable with what ARM offer today or what Apple offer in terms of the mobile space. They just don't exist. They're catching up, and every year they make, oh, now we're up to the Cortex C78 or something like that, but they're not there yet. They're still two, three, four years behind. And at that same time, in that two, three, four year window, Apple and ARM are also producing more uh, processors. Of course, we're waiting to see what happens with the new Orion CPU from uh, Qualcomm. So lots of exciting things going on. So there you go. I don't want to be a downer. Right? I think this is great. Competition is great, but I, I do feel that sometimes people have this kind of head in the clouds idea about what's really going on. So competition, yes, but let's not overhype it. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You can also follow me on Twitter and on other social media networks at Gary Explains. You can see the other handles here on the screen. I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in mail address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.